Porch pirates. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the term, a porch pirate is somebody who drives around and deliberately watches out for unattended packages. You know, UPS or Federal Express or the post office or whoever, they leave a package on your doorstep and there's nobody home. And, you know, unless the package has to be signed for, they can just leave it. You know how that works. Tracking says it's been delivered, it's been delivered. And people drive around and there are people who just kind of matter factually, matter of factly do this. And there are people who do it for a living. They go around deliberately watching out for this so that they can steal your boxes. And I've had this happen to me. It's happened to me a few times where a package was supposed to have been delivered and it had disappeared because apparently somebody stole it or it might have gotten delivered to someplace else. It's hard to tell sometimes unless you have a camera on your doorstep. Now, around the holiday season, this happens more and more because obviously more and more things are being mailed especially with online shopping. So the police have this system now whereby they try to entrap porch pirates. They set boxes out that have tracking devices in them so that they can trail these people and then go and pick them up for the theft. And like I said, I've had packages stolen from me before. And I have done this when I was a kid. Here's confession time, story time. When I was a little kid, my mother used to make me do this. She used to, when I was like 10, 11 years old, whatever, something like that. I was, I was young. She used to make me take things off people's porches. And she didn't have a car. We were walking. So I'm carrying a box scared to death that I'm going to jail. And she used to force me to do this. And I, I just point this out so that I can tie this all in. I just want to say, you know, if you, if you do this, if you're a parent who makes your child steal, um, whether it's taking a package off a porch or if it's helping you shoplift. I've seen a lot of videos where people are doing this. I hope you rot in hell because it's bad enough that you're doing it, but you're corrupting a child in the process. It's my, it's my penguin. Penguins, they have a really hard, miserable life. They really do watch the video, watch videos of penguins. Their life is rough, but yeah, my mother used to make me do this until something happened that made me take a stand against it when I was a child. And I'll get back to that here in a minute after I've made my point. So the police now, they put these tracking devices in these packages so that they can follow these people and catch them and arrest them for stealing off of people's porches. Now, I'm kind of torn on this. Whereas, yes, I do want the police to be able to catch people who have stolen packages. Like I said, when I was a child, I was forced to do it. And I've had packages stolen. To be frank, I would be glad just to get my package back and, you know, let the punishment fit the crime. This is really what it comes down to. And I've talked about this before. I've had a few discussions about justice and the difference between moral or ethical justice, you know, true justice or what some people call biblical justice and legal justice. There is a huge gap in understanding between what these things are. And legal justice is not always justice. As a matter of fact, it can be quite evil at times. And I'm, I believe that a punishment should fit the crime. Somebody steals a package, I want my stuff back, and I'd be happy to know that they got stuck with a couple of months of uh, community service or whatever. You're going to go around stealing packages, you're going to pay it back, pay it back to the community. I'm fine with that, but that's not what's happening. First of all, I have a little bit of a problem with the whole tracking device concept in the first place because I think that it's too much power in the hands of the police, period because they're using it to track packages and it's being justified because people are like, yeah, I get those scoundrels. They stole my package. But what else are they using these tracking devices for? Because they have wholesale use of them pretty much. They can do whatever they want. What else are they tracking? What else are they watching or listening to? I don't trust that. I don't trust that. I don't like the idea of them being able to use tracking devices that way. The other thing is that the police deliberately put very high-end items in these boxes so that they can make it an automatic felony. Which is reminiscent of the whole war on drugs and all of the 
tens of thousands of people across the United States that are languishing in jail right now because they got picked up twice on a marijuana charge. And they had just a pinch, just enough, for the judge to technically call it intent to sell. And so they're sitting in jail for 10 years because they had a couple of joints. It's a bogus felony charge. So let's say you have a guy who, or whoever, they've never done this before. They steal a package. It's a stupid thing. But now they're looking at a felony charge. And what if they have another felony charge? Maybe they got arrested with a joint once and they already have a felony charge. So they sit there in jail for five or 10 years on your tax dollars for stealing a package. Does that fit the crime? I don't know. I don't think it does. I think that's too much. I think that's an abuse of power to create a felony out of an entrapment. I have problems with that. And like I said, I've had packages stolen. And I'd be like, I would be happy enough just to get my stuff back and have them pay it forward to the community. You know, give, give the guy, if he's done it a couple of times, give him a six months worth of um, community service. Make him pay it back to the community that he stole from. I think that's fair. I don't think that he should sit in jail for 10 years on a felony charge. You're destroying someone's life and making me pay for it because that comes out of our tax dollars, right? You're paying for that. You're paying for that. Is that right? I don't know. Now back to my other story, my little confession, if you will. So I'm like 10, 11 years old. My mother's making me steal packages. She was like, go get that package. You know, and you just, you were your little kid. You either, you don't realize what you're doing or you do what you're told because you don't want to, you don't want to cross your parent, especially if your parent is very abusive. And mine was, I've talked about this on several videos. She was a diagnosed paranoid schizophrenic and she was violent. And so it was, she told me to do something. I better do it until something happened that forced me to take a stand on it. I had an epiphany, if you will, one day, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did, even though the consequences were rather severe. I had been made to take a package and I got it home and I opened it up. I had to open them too. Can you believe that crap? <laughs> you think she would at least open the damn boxes after she made me do that. But I open the box and it's a book. It's a children's book for somebody much younger than I was. It's a book that was written for like a six year old or something like Dr. Seuss kind of book. But this book was written specifically for children dying of a chronic illness. It was a book designed to, and I can't remember the title of it or anything like that. I just remember what was in it, you know, the rudimentary drawings. And I read the book. I read the book because I was like, what the hell is this? It was a book to help a terminally ill child cope with their inevitable death. And I had that epiphany. I'm sitting there even as a child, like I said, I was 10 or 11 and I'm like, oh my God. You know, how evil am I to take this book from this kid and he's dying? It bothered me really bad. And I, I wrapped it back up as best as I could and brought it back where I found it and left it there and wouldn't do it again. I was like, I'm done. I'm not taking anything else. I don't care what she says. And oh man, she was mad the next time. Uh, First of all, she was pissed I brought the book back. When she found out about that, I don't even want to get into it. But then I would, you know, go and get that package. Uh-uh, no, no, I don't want to. Because that bothered me so much, it left a mark on me. It, it left a mark on my heart, if you will. And, man, she was infuriated that I wouldn't cooperate with that anymore. Which brings me back to that, you know, because I've seen a lot of videos where people, you know, in stores, shoplifting videos and like these porch pirate videos where a car pulls up and a little kid runs out and goes and grabs a package. That's that parent forcing that kid and stealing or teaching that kid to do something they shouldn't be doing or shoplifting where the kid is helping the parent shoplift. 
you know, when you're bad enough, if you're doing it, whatever your reason is for doing it, you know, not without even getting into that. When you're deliberately forcing a child to partake of that, and you're corrupting them. That's double evil, man. I, I just can't condone it. Having been there myself and speaking from experience, you know, that is just double evil. So, you know, shame on you the hell with you. You're going to burn for that one. <laughs> Anyways, that's that's just my take on it. You know, speaking on it from a, a few different perspectives. As someone who's been there, as somebody who's had things taken. I think that the methods that are being used is taking it a little bit too far. Setting up a sting where you catch someone in the act of stealing the package. I, I, I'm for that as long as the punishment's going to fit the crime. I'm not too thrilled with the idea of, you know, just recapping here, not too thrilled with the idea of using tracking devices and definitely think it's dirty pool to artificially create a felony out of it by putting extremely expensive items in the box. And that's my take on it. You know, if you have any opinions on it, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. Be nice about it. <laughs> I get enough hate mail on this channel. So if you have any opinions on it, let me know what you think. Um, I always, I do try to respond. So there we go. Penguin, one more time. Penguin, he looks happy. He looked blurry. Sorry about that. He looks happy, but penguins have a tough life. And so do we. Online shopping. So the police have this system now whereby they try to entrap porch pirates. They set boxes out that have tracking devices in them so that they can trail these people and then go and pick them up for the theft. And like I said, I've had packages. Porch pirates. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the term, a porch pirate is somebody who drives around and deliberately watches out for unattended packages. You know, UPS or federal people who just kind of matter factorly, matter of factly do this. And there are people who do it for a living. They go around deliberately watching out for this so that they can steal your boxes. And I've had this happen to me. It's happened to me a few times where a package was supposed to have been delivered and it had disappeared because apparently somebody stole it or it might have gotten delivered to someplace else. It's hard to tell sometimes unless you have a camera on your doorstep. Now, around the holiday season, this happens more and more because obviously more and more things are being mailed, especially with On Express or the post office or whoever. They leave a package on your doorstep and there's nobody home. And, you know, unless the package has to be signed for, they can just leave it. You know how that works. Tracking says it's been delivered. It's been delivered. And people drive around and there are people.